Okay, you guys asked for it, a more comprehensive tutorial on Reposé. So here it goes. Today what we're going to do is a tutorial on making a little Reposé wolf head. So I've gone ahead and I went on to Google and I pulled up some clip art for different wolf heads. And I got this one, it seemed to be my winner, but I got a whole pile of different references which I'm going to use as I sculpt out my 3D because these are all just two-dimensional stylized um, references. And from there, I want to see if I can just kind of uh, evolve my own particular wolf head out of that. So we're going to start with making our little clay maquette, our little clay mock-up. So here we go. All right, so I've done my little cutout here. Um, I've got a chunk of brass that I'm making this out of and it's gonna be about six by six. So this is the appropriate size. I've just printed this sheet off and now I'm just gonna trace out the outline onto a piece of plywood so that I can do my little clay maquette. Now, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna fold this in half, establish a center line. That just gives a useful reference point. So now we're going to get into the clay. If you don't have natural clay like this, um, you could use plasticine. We're not, this is not a whole lot of volume here, so you could probably get away with some sort of modeling clay or plasticine. Just something that will give you something that you can mold very quickly and easily. First off, I'm going to describe the center line. And now the sculpting begins. Eyeballs go there. I'm just gonna put them in right off the bat to kind of give me a landmark to work with. The nose will be the highest point on this. Um, doing a sculpture like this where if look from the side if it was in full 3d it's going to have a long nose coming out but what we're doing is something that is foreshortened or um, what's called relief um, where we need to create the illusion of full 3d by not going quite full depth so it's just it's kind of a trick of the eye and it's a little bit tricky for a beginner sometimes to try to get their head around what they're trying to achieve but Basically, this thing is gonna be looked at from straight on. So we're just trying to create the illusion that it's 3D, getting enough depth to do that, but not any more than that. We don't want sticking out um, a full four or five inches. We want the, the whole thing to be maybe only an inch and a half um, at full depth. Now my chosen piece here is a pretty simplified stylization of a wolf head and doesn't give a whole lot of idea of the actual anatomy of what's going on it's very two-dimensional flattened out so I'm using a little bit of my knowledge of what a dog or wolf head actually looks like to try to achieve the shape but I'm gonna have to refer to a couple of my reference drawings okay i've got this guy here which is not fully a side view but it's it's more of a anatomical sketch there so that should be able to give me a little bit more of a reference as far as understanding what the shape is and we're not going for full-on anatomically correct by any stretch this is supposed to be stylized so we just have to get enough that it is believable and recognizable as a wolf head Thank you. 
10 minutes later, that's what I've come up with. So this is pretty crude by my standards, but um, I just want to illustrate, we don't really need to have anything really too uh, precise or even that detailed. We're just looking to get some rough topographical um, cues as to um, how to start working the metal. So this will give us a starting point there. You can certainly do a much more refined clay face if you want to, to give you better ideas, but um, I just want to bring this down to the simplest basics. And if you are someone who considers yourself non-artistic and can't sculpt or think you can't sculpt, everybody can. Um, it's just to what degree. So if you can muster up enough skill to be able to pull off something this good, this is good enough for us to get into our next stages. So let's get started with the next stages, namely uh, onto the metal. I just happen to have this little piece of brass here. It's about six inches square, which determined kind of the size of my face that's gonna go on there. And this size uh, scale is something that is easy enough to work with. It's small enough that it's not unwieldy, but also big enough that you're not fighting to get little fine details. So it's a good starter size as far as scale. I've gone ahead and annealed my piece of brass, which I do in my forge. If you don't have a forge, you need to be able to get, whether you're using brass or copper, up to about 600 degrees for an hour to be able to kneel it, or get it up to more like a thousand degrees for a few minutes, get some color in there and quench it. Um, you can do the same thing, but to be able to do that, you're going to need either um, a coal forge where you can get some access to it, or you could do it in a campfire, but you have to be careful that you're not going to burn this. It could, if you get it too hot, just deteriorate. So that's something you might need to be careful. One other thing you might be able to use is a propane torch like this. I believe they used to call this a tiger torch. Uh, basically, you would just hook this up to a barbecue tank, and this can get you up to sufficient heat to get some color into um, non-ferrous metals, even probably a piece of steel, if that's what you're gonna work with. I would suggest you be working with, whether it's copper, brass, or steel, 18 gauge is what you're looking for. And 18 gauge by steel sizes, uh, I apologize, I don't remember what the decimal equivalent for that is, but I'm sure you can look it up. Uh, in any event, you're gonna need to anneal your piece because you need to soften it. Whatever the metal, the stuff work hardens very quickly, and you're gonna need to be able to do that. Once you've achieved that, we will move on. All right, so I'm trying to do this video series for the beginner or somebody working out of their garage that has minimal tooling, so in, that's difficult for me. I've got to go way backwards. I got a lot of tools. So I'm trying to dumb this down to the very basic essentials. A sandbag, I think, is something that you need. I've got, I use my shot bag with lead shot being better um, displacer than sand, but sand does work. So I came up with an idea for a sandbag using an old pair of jeans where basically you cut off a leg, use some of these zip ties, and make a kind of like a little wrapped up bag and this is just full of sand. So there is sandbag where you'll be able to dish some of your metal into. Um, in addition to that, what you're gonna need is a couple of hammers. I'm gonna be using my raising hammer and you should have something with a rectangular face that can reach in to do that. And whether you take some sort of balking hammer and modify it, you can just grind it um, to some sort of shape using an angle grinder, but you wanna kinda of get that. And also a larger ball peen hammer. I think we can get away with just using that. Typically I use probably about eight or nine different size hammers doing something like this, but I'm gonna to try to restrict myself to these two hammers. Also a couple of chisels, uh, dulled over chisels. I'm going to be using my stake. In a pinch you could use a large cold chisel that you've dulled up and just put it into a vise and use that for your stake. So if you've got a vise or even something that you can wedge this into to hold it. And in addition to that, then maybe a three or four cold chisels that have been dulled over and polished that they're not gonna cut into the work. So pretty dull um, and we'll come in for a close up on these tools to hope, hopefully you can get a good look at what, what we're trying to do. That is basically gonna be our toolkit. In addition to that, I'm probably gonna be working over my block of wood here, which just fits into my table, but essentially any piece of hardwood that can get sanded over and create a little bit of a dome is a nice platform 
to work into. I've also done it um, occasionally with just like a sledgehammer handle in the vise and just something to work on to that. But you should be able to find some chunk of wood that you can just kind of dome over a little bit. It makes a great working surface. So see if you can scare up those tools and then join us in the next video and we're gonna get started with this. So back out, see ya.